The Platamax DF series of power supplies from Enermax featured patented dust-free rotation fan technology and a DF switch for users to activate DFR anytime during operation. Units range up to 1200 watts with an 80 plus platinum rating while maintaining a compact length of just 160 millimeters and new sleeved cables give your build an extra clean look right out of the box. Click the link in the description below to learn more. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm pretty excited because we're going to be taking a look and upgrading my original, my very first HTPC or home theater PC that I built five years ago, back in 2013. Since then, it's had a couple upgrades along the way. Uh, about two years ago, I upgraded the GPU and the storage, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But what happened a couple months ago was that I actually built a second home theater PC that was uh, very high end. You guys can go ahead and check out that two part series when you have a chance. It's pretty insane. Uh, so I really didn't have any need for a second HTPC at that point. And since then, this has kind of just been collecting dust in my old office back at home. So I decided that for this video, I would go about actually upgrading this from old HTPC to mid-range 1080p gaming system. I don't really have a need for a gaming PC immediately, but it's nice to have something small form factor. Let's say we're doing stack attack in the future. It's kind of cool uh, to have something like this just ready to go at a moment's notice. And I'm also a huge small form factor enthusiast if you guys didn't already know that. So this sort of thing really gets me going. Um, let's first talk about the specs that we're rocking here so we can kind of see where we're, where we're, where we're coming from. Uh, first off, we've got the Core i5-3570K. That's an Ivy Bridge quad core processor uh, that is the original processor that I used when building this system back in the day. It's currently clocked at 4.3 gigahertz at 1.21 volts and that's with the help of an ASRock uh, Z77 EITX motherboard. It's got built-in Wi-Fi which is great, plenty of USB 3 on the back for an older generation board and that's going to be paired with an 8 gigabyte kit of AMD Radeon DDR3 at 2400 speed. It's actually pretty fast for a kit of its time but 8 gigs is also kind of pushing it if you're going to be playing modern AAA titles and especially if you're going to be multitasking alongside that. So we are going to be upgrading that memory kit to this 16 gigabyte kit of Vengeance LP non-X. This is DDR3. This is before the X came around. Just a standard low profile. It's still got the green PCBs and all that. Now we are taking a slight uh, speed hit here going from 2400 to 1866. However, I'm okay with that because it's not going to affect our gaming performance much compared to uh, what we might incur if we had uh, too little RAM in our gaming system. So very excited to be swapping that out today. Oh, I, I completely overlooked the CPU cooler that we're using. Uh, it's actually a Samuel 17 from Prolima Tech. I don't think they make it anymore. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, it's a fantastic low profile cooler. I actually swapped out the, the, the uh, stock fan for a Gelid 120, um, which are super quiet and very economical fans. Uh, that's been doing a great job. And we'll be compar comparing thermals a bit uh, after we rebuild the system with all the upgraded parts. I'm keeping the, the cooler though, because it's just a, a fantastic cooler. It looks awesome as well. Now the original graphics card was the EVGA GTX 650 Ti Boost, which I later made a slight upgrade to with a Gigabyte GTX 750 Ti. And then two years ago, I swapped that out yet again for a Sapphire Compact R9 285, which is what's in here today. Um, but that's also starting to show its signs of age, especially if we're gonna try to do some uh, 1080p gaming at max settings and things like that. So we're gonna be swapping that out as well for an EVGA Superclock GTX 1060 six gigabyte model. Um, and this is gonna be a fantastic card because it is for one, uh, sort of a small form factor card. It's mini, it's less than eight inches long on the PCB. Additionally, it only needs a single six pin power connector and it should theoretically have a bit more uh, overclocking headroom as well, even though it is already factory overclocked. Um, now, I could have gone with the GTX 1070 or something a little bit more higher end because believe it or not, if you overclock that 3570K, it is still a very capable gaming CPU and it could definitely handle a GTX 1070, but uh, we still have the original a uh, 450 watt SFX power supply from Silverstone. This is one of the more premium ones at the time. It has modular cables and it's 80 plus gold. But at 450 watts, I didn't want to push it. I definitely want to overclock. I mean, obviously we're already overclocking the CPU and if we're overclocking the GPU too, I didn't want to push it with a GTX 1070. My phone's going off, son of a bird. I don't know who this is. But anyways, the point is that I think this is gonna make a fantastic upgrade for the system at hand. Uh, and again, I appreciate just how small it is. It's gonna fit right into our SG05 from Silverstone here. Now, finally for storage, I've been booting off of a 256 gig 
Plextor M5 Pro, which is just a standard two and a half inch SATA drive. And that's been paired with a 480 gig Crucial M SATA drive because this board actually, the motherboard actually has an M SATA slot on it that's been used for all of our games. We didn't really need much storage because it was just a living room PC. Uh, but now that we're going full blown gaming system, we're actually gonna take out the Plextor drive uh, and boot off of the Crucial instead and then place a one terabyte WD black inside of this thing just for all of our games, because we are gonna need a bit more storage now if this is a dedicated gaming rig. So that should be super fun. Hopefully we can boot off of that M state of drive, no problem. I don't think it'll give us any issues, we'll see. Um, so that's pretty much it. Oh, and then there's an LG Blu-ray reader writer that I never use <laughs> right here. It's a slim optical drive. On that note, I think I've pretty much covered everything for the system and where we're headed with the upgrades. I think at this point we can just start taking this apart. I'm actually gonna disassemble the entire thing so we can do a proper cleaning because it is dusty as hell. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and start putting it back together with the existing parts that we're reusing and all of our upgraded hardware. So, should be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get started on that. Yeah. Alright guys, so here it is. Honestly, I gotta say she looks pretty good. I spent a lot of time with cable management and just dusting the individual parts this time around, so she looks brand new practically. And I think even more impressive than that is the sort of performance gains that we're seeing from swapping out that R9 285 with this GTX 1060 six gigabyte model. Um, we actually ran uh, Unigen Heaven 4.0. With the old system, we were getting a score of 870 and an average frame rate of 34 FPS. With this new graphics card, we actually saw an uplift of over 90%. So we actually got a score of 1,670 and an average frame rate of 66. Even crazier though, is that we actually dropped temps on our 3570K by simply cleaning out the CPU cooler and reapplying some thermal interface material. Uh, we actually went from 73 degrees Celsius max on the package down to 66 C. So a seven degree difference simply by reapplying thermal paste and, and cleaning the cooler. So make sure you guys are doing regular cleans on your systems, guys. It really does make a difference. And then uh, additionally, I did run 3D, 3D Mark Fire Strike, not extreme, just regular Fire Strike, and got a point difference from the old system. I think we went from 7,100 on the overall score to 10,400. The graphics score initially was uh, 8,400, and that went soaring to 13,400 points. 
um, once we slotted in the GTX 1060 here. So overall, some really impressive gains. I'm super happy with how this turned out. If you guys have any ideas on what you'd like me to do with this rig for a, another content piece down the line, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe to Bitwit for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Also, check out Bitwit Ultra on Floatplane. That's a thing that I can now say because it's 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 a thing. So if you guys want early access, a week early without ads, and a bunch of other features coming soon, uh, feel free to check out the link in the description below. Otherwise, have a good one, guys. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in the next video. I poked my, my arm on the, the Wi-Fi adapter. It's hurt. Ow.